There's a second fish. This one's a lot hotter. Got There's two fish down there. The smaller one stole it, but uh, that's a good sign. People talk about early ice and why it's such a big deal to get out early. You've literally got only a couple week window where these fish are really, really putting on the feed bag. Especially in northern lakes where you've got tulabies that are doing their thing late in the fall. All right. So we got out here early to intercept the bite as they move up this piece of structure. And a real handy feature that I like to use on the hummingbird is it shows you the time. Not only does it show you the time, it shows you when the sun sets, which my rule of thumb is typically an hour before and an hour after sunset. So it's nice to know when the sun's actually supposed to set. But now I also know it's 3.58. I caught my first fish maybe three minutes ago. I got two on the ice, it's 3.58, and the sun sets at 4.23. So I've essentially got 40 minutes before the sun sets when the fish has started triggering moving up onto this piece of structure. Because like I said, we got out here early, a couple of fish are coming through, maybe one or two they weren't really eaten, and now the first two that I've ate in the last five minutes have come at around 3.55. So that's something I can stick in my history and know for maybe the next day or throughout the week what time those fish are actually moving up on this structure. Oh, there's another one on the bottom breaking off. See that one on the bottom? Let's see if we can get some competitive action going here. The one on the bottom's pretty interested. Yep, yep. Oof, that should have been the time. Come on. There we go. Wow, he just crushed it that time. There's another one down there. We just caught the one, so now they're really moving up here. This is gonna be another cutter fish. But I'm out here to get my six and get out of here. I'm fishing in somewhat deep water. I don't know if you've noticed, but I typically don't like to fish in this deep water, but if I'm out here for meat and I'm gonna keep these fish, you know, I typically don't like to release them when it's this deep, but they tend to winter in these spots and especially when there's a presence of like i said soft-bodied bait fish like ciscos and in some lakes even smelt typically they'd be relating to perch but these fish are relating to schooling nomadic fish that tend to stay off bottom and suspend so i am using a color match to represent what might be a smelt or a cisco and i'm fishing much higher off bottom typically when you're walleye fishing you're pounding bottom and you're fishing tight to bottom but my zoom screen here is at 31 feet and 36 feet of water. So we're five feet off bottom. And I'm, I'm jigging at the top of that and these fish are flying off bottom to hit it. So there's always a huge buzz every year about early ice. Everybody's so eager to get out on the ice. And there is an obvious reason for that. Fish are really putting on the feed bag continually, you know, even before the ice forms. And as early ice goes on, these fish are still putting on the feed bag. Let's see if I can get this guy to bite. So you have to intercept that because it really doesn't last that long. By the time Christmas comes, the door slams shut and these fish are back to just belly on bottom essentially. And you'll get them, you know, in windows, maybe before and after a front a lot of times. But right now you can count on them really wanting to eat, chasing baits. This bait has rattles in it, so I'm trying to engage the rattles right at that moment where the fish is sniffing it out just to trigger something in that fish into eating. Hopefully this competitive nature gets one of these to go because I got two on me right now. Three fish again, four fish. They are, oh here, this one's flying. This one's absolutely, that one it was not gonna hesitate. That one wanted it way more than those other three fish that were down there. My goodness. That competitive instinct can really give you an edge. Calling in a bunch of fish. There's another nice cutter. See, that one was a no-brainer. I coached those other fish for a while. They were really hesitating, and then this one decided, if you're not gonna eat it, I'm gonna eat it. And there's fish down there right now. I mean, this is the time. This is literally the time. All right, so there's four fish, 20 minutes. Let's see if we can get our limit here quick and get out of here. There's two fish on the screen right now. One of them's a really nice mark. This one's high up as well. 
like I said before, they're not relating to perch, which are near the bottom. They're relating to fish that suspend. I just showed up on, on the scene. Bam, bam, that's a better mark too. That one was just waiting for me down there. I showed up on the scene and he took advantage of it. It just goes to show you, like I said, early in the season, these fish got basically one thing on their mind. They don't want to expend energy throughout the winter, so they're going to feed now while they can. Okay. Another excellent eater here, which is all I'm after. I'd take a big fish, but I'm out here for a meal. I'm going to have a fish fry and feed my friends. That did not take long. Like I said, I was marking a fish, dropped down to him, and before I even got to my zoom screen, he noticed it. I started flying up to it. didn't take much. And I love it when they don't take any coaching. This one wants to eat. Yep, that one. Man, I just love that. Like I said, no coaching necessary. A lot of times you really gotta finesse these walleyes, but if you capitalize on early ice like this, they're, they're here for one reason and they're here to eat. And it can be some of the best fishing through the ice, through the cold water period and through the year. So there we go. It's 4.25, the sun set two minutes ago. I've been fishing for 20 minutes and I got my six walleyes. So I'm going to leave the night at that, go home and have some fresh walleye.